was thinking of uh, discussing about how uh, if you're in a pinch and you're on a job and you have a deadline that's really quick and you need to animate something really fast, it would be nice to talk about how you can do it one way that's kind of slower and then the other way that's faster. So the slow way to animate this would be to sit here and figure out, okay, what's this pose going to be for this character that I'm doing? Okay, it's going to be he's standing here and he's uh, looking down at a, uh, a gopher hole down here. And I'm going to lightly rough in the, the pose. And he's disgusted with this gopher. He can't get this gopher to come out of his uh, out of his hole to get rid of him. And so I'm working on the first pose here. And you can see it takes quite a while to rough out the uh, gesture of it and then I'm going to sit here and start to make it into the character. So I'm obviously, you know, spending the time to draw the, uh, make the drawing of the character, try to make it look all nice and pretty and everything. It's still a little loose and rough, but I'm trying to get it to where it's tied down and really clear as to what this attitude is that he's going through here. With the center line, trying to make it a little three-dimensional. My point of this whole demo here is to try and show you that just to get the first pose down. It's taking quite a while, quite a bit of drawing to go through all this stuff and make sure that this is here and that's there and blah, 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 blah. There we go. So there's this alligator. He's looking at this gopher hole. And then the second pose would be uh, if he's already down on the ground looking at this and he's getting ready to uh, nab the gopher if he pops up again because he wants to get rid of him or maybe he's like eating his eating his garden or something or his vegetables or whatever so he's right down here getting ready super close to nabbing him he wants to get right there so when he pops up he's got him And this is just two poses, by the way, you know, that I'm working on. And you're just thinking of just the main key acting poses, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, this okay. is like the start pose and the, the last pose. It's just ready to nab them. That. I have this tail up like this. Something like that. There we are. So, this is the first pose. He's disgusted with that gopher, and now he's gotten down on the ground and he's ready to nab him when he pokes his head up. So, it's taken me all that time to just get these two poses right now if I want to animate this a lot faster because when I start going back in and doing the breakdown between these two there's going to be multiple breakdowns and maybe other key poses that describe how it gets down there in, in extremes um, that's going to take quite a while to do all that drawing so now I'm going to show you a different way because I'm not going to go through all that it'll take forever I'm going to show you another method where I can do the same thing and I can animate the whole action a lot faster Oh, Rico, can you show, show them your thumbnails? Oh, yeah, okay. You guys, this, you always hear me talking about thumbnails. And there, he had drawn. Look how simple those are. Yeah. And that was his two exploring poses that he decided to use. And that made life a lot easier for you, didn't it? Oh, yeah, just to have the idea down in a little tiny thumb. They call them thumbnails because they're about the size of your thumbnail. <laughs> Didn't what's the story behind that with the classic painters? Didn't they used to do something? 
They did thumbnail compositions or something. That's where it came oh, from. Oh, they did. Yeah. yeah. Is that where they got? I'm yeah. not sure. Okay. That's where they came from. Yeah. yeah. They got it from where they, fine art. Because they'd keep it small because you can't, you know, if it's big, you got to spend a lot of time on it. When it's small, you know, you're not going to be spending that much time. It's just a shorthand. Right, just work out the idea. And then you create these kind of uh, poses, these beautiful poses right here. Simplify. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to see, do another a version of this, but it's going to be simplified. It's going to go a lot faster. And you'll see how I can get that character fully animated down into that pose. Okay. Yeah. So now I'm going to do the same thing. There's the hole. Here's the alligator. Same thing based on those thumbnails that you saw. That's that's all I need. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's the attitude from the other poses. I don't have to sit there and labor the drawing too much, so it's kinda of nice to just throw that down because you can see everything. It's loose but it's still clear. Yeah. Go. Just put that on a little tighter. There we go. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to do the next one. Next frame, which he's down here already. And he's looking at that where that little gopher is. And he wants to get that little guy. <laughs> I was laughing because I was thinking about let's just put a little happy cloud over here. <laughs> 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 there we go. Very cool. There, so it goes from there to there. Now, that took like what? One tenth of the time to draw? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but both ways work. Yeah, they both you work. Know, but just this saying, is more spontaneous. Yeah, I'm just saying, if you're in a rush. Okay, now I'm, gonna, now I'm thinking to myself, well, he's really mad, so he wants to get down there quick before that gopher pops his head out so instead of being too methodical he's gonna just dive down there so I'm thinking he's gonna anticipate and he's gonna jump Oops. and then he's gonna land down here so I'm gonna do the jump pose here next very cool little bit. That's okay if the volumes are off a little bit. You can always change that. So this allows me to explore a pose without spending too much time drawing. I don't know what that tail is going to do, but anyway, this is his jump pose. So now I've roughed that out pretty quick. Now I can go back in and uh, figure out what the uh, anticipation is going to be to get up here. I can rough this out pretty fast. All right, so there's that one. He's got to anticipate before he jumps. from this anticipation to jump up into this pose. She's all right.
Okay, now I've got one blank between here and here, so I can have them come down. And this allows me to experiment and just kind of goof around with uh, how he gets down there. Without wasting a lot of time. But he draws these nice, clear, loose shapes. And I know this tail is going to change because it's being pulled around, so that's going to be a, a variable that will change later on. But anyway, so now... Are you want to add a drawing? Oh. Yeah, I'm definitely going to add one between here and here, and then one between here and here. I want to finish off how he goes from down here up into this. So obviously he's slowing into this uh, highest pose here. Again, just keeping it real loose and rough. Now look at how he flips it, you guys. He's feeling that. Very cool. Let's break up the... This arm's up higher over here on the left, and the one on the right is dragging behind. Might even put a little elbow bend in there, maybe. Maybe. Happy little chew. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes here, he goes, anticipates, goes, starts to go up, transitions, gets up there, and then he's got to come down here, and then down to there. So I'm going to do one between here and here next. Get this TV paint slickness. Look at him, he's a pro. Look how fast. <laughs> this is just like I said, you know, a quick first pass. You know, all this can change drastically as you go along. It's just to rough it out really quick. And what it does is it gives you something to work with right away. So you can start making adjustments and changes really fast because you're not invested too much in the drawing. And right now you're just you're just thinking about the, the the movement, right? The movement attitude. Yep. Just trying to get the basic. You say that do you feel like that's the key? Um, I think it's well when you're an you know, like Dale told me one time, Dale Barry said, when you're animating you animate when you then when you're drawing, you're drawing, but don't try to do this, both of them at the same time, because you, then you're not you're breaking up your thought patterns. You know, you're you're concentrating just now on animating, so you get to have the freedom to do what you want with this movement. I'm going to mess around here and see if I can do something weird with his hand coming into the foreground. It may or may not work silhouette-wise, but at least I'm experimenting See, with it. and what's cool right there is you might just, that's the breakdowns you guys always hear me talking about. He, it's not an in-between. He just experimented with, and it looks great. It looks like, you know, he's got one hand that's delayed, broke it up as far as the different elements. And it's because he's flipping it and feeling it. Yeah, it's the only way to get some cool movement in there is try to be innovative with it, you know, and be different. Like here, instead of just doing a straight in between where he goes from here and slows into that, 
I've added another extreme where he squishes down and hits the ground, and then he comes up into this pose. He's already got his the screen right hand is hitting the ground, so I'm going to have that really compress here. Really stretch that elbow out for the impact, like his whole upper body is squished. Now this hand that's already contacted is being hidden behind him, right in here. So then he comes up with it later on over there just to add some more visual difference or variety or whatever. Trying to get a little follow through action on the tail there. Okay, right, another one here. Oops. Body come down. Slap that foot down. Bam. Nice. Now we can kind of roll through it here and see how it works. Cool. Yeah, just pure movement. No real drawing going on. Just trying to get the gestural movement of how he gets from here all the way down to here. Anyway, he's like, he's had enough of this gopher and he's going to get down there and get ready. To yeah. Go. Now I'm going to do another version of this simplified, but I'm going to have him, instead of jumping down there right away to get ready for the gopher, I'm going to have him sneak down into that pose. Okay. So I want to keep this pose and I want to keep the first one on a separate layer. And then I'm going to reanimate how he gets from that first pose to the second pose. Okay, let me see. I don't know how you set that up. <laughs> Keep going. So now here's, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to animate him from here. He's disgusted with the gopher that's down in the hole. And he's going to get down to where he's going to nab him when he comes to Kazetta. So this time, instead of him wanting to get down there quickly and jump down there, I'm going to have him very methodically sneak down there like I'm going to get this guy that I'm just going to get him right there. Yeah, look at I'm getting slick now. I told you. <laughs> I got a great teacher showing me, by the way. <laughs> so listen to his 107 videos he's got on the YouTube channel. <laughs> okay, now he's going to sneak down here. He's not going to jump. So I'm going to think for a second, hmm, how am I going to get him down here? What's what's he? Uh, what way would he do it? So he is going to, he's going to reach down this on. I'm going to start throwing drawings down here. I saw, a, just as a side note, I saw a lecture or a panel with a bunch of Pixar guys, story guys, and they were talking about how they come up with these ideas for the films and how they develop them. And they said, you know, we just throw some on the wall and see what sticks. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just throwing in a drawing. And if it works, great. If it doesn't, I'm going to erase it and redo it. Like here, I'm going to have him now this would be a place if, if you decide let's say director says to you i want him to be more devious and thinking and sneaks in there now if you're approaching this scene would you do thumbnails yeah i would if i had a chance if i didn't have a chance i'd just start throwing stuff down and go for it if you had oh right if okay. i don't have time to to plot yeah. out this stuff too much okay that's a little too close to his nose there i'm gonna bring that out a little bit Something like that. Just getting the idea of it down here. In fact, I'm barely drawing. I'm just throwing down lines. <laughs> when I think about it, I'm not really drawing much at all. I'm just kind of doodling it out here. I'm trying to get it so his front part of his body is leaning into it. So he's going to come down, compress over here. It's going to be pretty much the same as far as the lower body. I want to kind of get a hunch in his back like he's uh, like his back is following through on his arm reach here. Love that eraser. 
<laughs> yeah, it makes it nice, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's so slick. This program's great. I gotta get used to this. Yeah, I'm just throwing a couple details in it to myself. I'm gonna leave that tail off for now just to see uh, how it works. And I'm gonna just go through these, flip these real quick. So yeah, definitely need a drawing here for sure. All right, so I'm gonna throw one in between these two. The master. Uh, see how I can get him to get into that nice, comfortable pose. <laughs> he looks so comfy there. <laughs> well, he's sneaking in. All right, I'm going to have him drag his head a little bit. I'm not going to worry about any details there. Just start it moving. And I'm going to have him reach. Start to get that reach going. See, this is one thing I learned in Walt Stanchfield's class. He used to give free classes at Disney at lunchtime. You know you went, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He used to say, you know, whatever is the focal point of the gesture or the, or the pose, do that first. You know, I'm not going to start with the feet on this, obviously. But the action here is that he's reaching down to the i got to figure out how to get his arm down to the ground. That's probably the most uh, pertinent point of this thing that's going on here so I have to draw that first and then the rest of it kind of just falls into place in fact having the onion skin on is kind of a distraction for me so I'm just gonna flip back and forth like this and let me let me show the viewers something yeah, sure. real quick you guys oh <laughs> <laughs> it's a this is I'm old uh beep, beep, boop. Okay, this is Walt Stanchfield. He was, remember this? Oh, he's, yeah. He's got two, two volumes. Two volumes here. These are great books. We recommend them to everybody. And what Mike was just talking about, these drawings like Mike is doing, this is what he taught us. And for animation, I just want to show you some drawings. Pretty much anything. Let's just keep it great. We recommend you get this book and the simplicity of the pose and the simplicity is the hard part because that is uh, you're trying to communicate in very few lines so I just wanted to point this out this is the book that or the teacher who was taught over at Disney for how many years oh god I don't know a long time <laughs> very long time he also worked at Disney's his whole career but yeah, he was an assistant animator, as far as I know, and I think he started in Alice in Wonderland. Oh, did he? Yeah, he goes way back. Okay. Walt so, Stanchfield. Oh, he's so, a fantastic teacher. I mean, he's so good that they made, uh, who, Don Hahn created two books, two yeah. volumes. So, we recommend that. Yeah, Don Hahn did, had a great idea. He took all of Walt Stanchfield's handout notes, put them into these two-volume books, and now you've got the whole thing. You don't have to have a huge... Because I've got all the handouts that he gave, and it's like a stack like this. Right, it's I, super thick. I got some. Because <laughs> he would do, what, once a week or something? Or almost every day, it seemed I, like. I thought it was like twice a week or something. Yeah, it was like a lot. All right, now that I see what's going on here, I'm going to go back to this, uh, this mode. And I'm going to flip. Get this body to lower down here. There we go. Now let me turn this off again to see what's going on. The reason why I like to work with without the onion skin for the most part is because it gives me the opportunity to see what it's really going to look like. And I know it's different for everyone. Some people go, oh, but I can't see it without the onion skin or the light on. Now I'm starting the tail to move here because it's going to start to move to glide up into that. So that's why I've started the movement. I'm trying to get him to get that arm down first while the other one unfolds and comes up into this. So he starts here, gets that arm going. You can see this is radically different than the other one. He's instead of jumping up and being all broad and everything, he's much more subtle about getting down here. And I can add more drawings to this too, which is gonna 
help make it even more methodical, quote unquote, how he gets down there. So I'll rough this in. Can you talk a little bit about how what you thought of Walt Stanchfield's? Um, oh, I thought it was just, it was great, because he talked about, I mean, he really talked about drawing for animation. That was his his main point, which I'd never taken a class like that before. Yeah, no, uh -uh. he was very specific about his training. Yeah. Which is nice. And it's... Just like what Mike's doing here, you know, just getting the, the essence of it. And if you put in more drawing, I think that's fine. Because he would, he would say, you know, if you don't have that foundation, the structure, the framing of the house, meaning these, these type of drawings, and you don't build on top of it, it's not going to do you any good. This is why everybody, you know, is told to always do quick sketches in, in figure drawing or just you know out in life when you're out in the uh, coffee shops wherever you are just keep your sketchbook with you like I <laughs> I just finally got I think it's the first time in a year I've washed my car because of the pandemic yeah and I was at the car wash and um, that was it was weird being outside drawing people again <laughs> Well, that's cool. You're able to go do that again. I'm heating the joint up. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, let's scroll through this real quick, see how it's working. All right, let's get in there. He's hunching his back up to go down. Great. So it's starting to move there, and then I'm just going to finish off with this here where he gets down in there and gets the final part. And notice, you guys, Mike's putting as many drawings as necessary to describe the scene. This is a good one. Thanks. And I have a comment about erasing. Um, when I was in grade school, my best friend and I, we were the school artists, and we were always drawn in class and getting busted. <laughs> and uh, one day he came into, I probably told you this already, but... One day he came to school and he said, oh, man, I'm so bummed out because my sister told me I'm a bad artist. And I said, what do you mean? You're a good artist. What, how does she get off telling you that you're a bad artist? And he says, well, she said, I'm always erasing all the time. She says, you're a bad artist because you draw something and you erase it and you're always changing it, fixing it, and making it, you know, trying to, you're doing it wrong. That's why you always are erasing. And I said, you go back and you tell her that <laughs> you're a slick artist because you've got the eye. You can see what's wrong and how to make it better. So you're racing it to improve it every time. So you're actually making it better and better and better. And it's true, especially in animation. God, if it, was, if it was down with just the one line, all animators end up throwing out drawings. <laughs> All of them do. You read The Illusion of Life. They said, uh, I think Frank and Ollie said in that book, you know, they were trying to figure out what it costs, you know, to make a feature. Oh, yeah, the pencils and stuff. Yeah, pencils, papers, and they figure, well, all animators throw out around, you know, 
they have to do four drawings for every one drawing that they keep, at least. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I said, I'm not really drawing, I'm just throwing lines out there, you know, and see what happens. And like those Pixar guys, the story guys, they just throw some against the wall. It never starts, the story never starts out brilliant. It's always like, they say it's really garbage, and then they have to, at least they have something to work with. That's the whole gist of it. It's like, you know, you throw some stuff down. If it doesn't work, you can start over. Right. At least you have some springboard to move forward with, which is better than having nothing. And I can see already this punch in the back, for some reason, is not really working for me. <laughs> it's like just really weird. Maybe it just needs well, another drawing. Right there. Yeah, it probably needs another drawing right there. That's I'll try that. See, I have the freedom to experiment with throwing another drawing for the heck of it. See if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll discard it and move there on. There you go. Yeah. At least I'm doing something here. I'm not, uh, I'm getting things done. That's such an important point. It's just put it down either in thumbnails or, or here. Just get something down. Don't be intimidated so much by that yeah. blank canvas. Yeah, don't, uh, sometimes it is intimidating. Absolutely. Just throwing in some shapes here. Happy little shapes. see how this works that's better yeah I'm gonna put Did one last thing you just he kept the adding well look at him putting more and more drugs in. <laughs> I'm just gonna add a slow in here <laughs> one last one this is where it gets to where it's more tight Still trying to keep it loose though. And look how he favored that hand to the last drawing. I just want to put notes out there for them to understand. Because he's slowing into it, so he's going to spend more time up there. Exactly. It's like he's reading my mind. <laughs> I think I want to get that gopher. Come ah, on, got that go. <laughs> There we go. It's a little choppy, but hey, that's just, I'm not trying to make it perfect. I'm just trying to make it work. It's, this is the pure animation. This is animation. It looks really not choppy. Rolls down there. Well, I mean, this is like, smooth. this is shifting here for some reason. It's like, it's shifting across the ground. Anyway, there it is. So that's another version of that. And it took, you know, relatively a little amount of time. Just minutes but rather than hours. That looks beautiful, man. So that's a totally different I way mean, of you getting think down. This, let me see. I think we started at what? 10.45? Yeah, 10.45. And so it's been an hour, and he did, how many mm -hmm. scenes you did? I did, well, I did two detailed poses, and then I did two, animated two full versions of how he got down there. Let's, let's show him. Okay, here's, 
We did more fleshed out drawings here for the poses, and that took a long time compared to what I did So that's later. what he first did in the, the very first test, that these two key poses right there were extremes, whatever you want to call them. Yep. And that's what he did. He created, put a little bit more time into that. And then you also got familiar with the character. Yeah, which helps. Which always <laughs> does help. And then you created... A much more simplified gestural rough. Yes. He jumps down to get that gopher. There, and there it is. And these are, now, he hasn't timed these out yet, but this is going to work. You can see it visually working, you guys. When you see it working like that, you know it's going to work. It's just a matter of timing it out and getting it figured out. Very cool. And I can add as many drawings or take away as many drawings as you want. You know, make it. And you don't, you're not invested in right. hours in each drawing or minutes, you know, just seconds, more seconds than minutes in each yeah, drawing. Yeah, these are beautiful. So much and more here's fun. The, the methodical evil, sneaky one. <laughs> <laughs> Completely different way to get it. <laughs> and then he did this all within an hour. And the key to it was... Simplification and uh, loose sketchiness, just and rough, rough drawings and feeling it out. And yeah. especially, I won't say not especially for beginners, just everybody. You just if you feel like your animation is stiff, that's how you, this is how you get through it. This is an approach to get through it without any and, hitches. And probably the most crucial element of doing this for me was that I didn't care. If I made mistakes, I just did it. So if I made mistakes, so what? I'll fix them. <laughs> right. After you, know. you play it at speed, you can see the mistakes of where to. Yeah, but if I sit here and think to myself, "Oh God, I can't, I can't put that breakdown in there because it might not work." Oh no, no, no! I can't do that because it might not work. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm immobilized. I and can't do anything. Frozen. I can't get right, anything done. Right. So right. just dive in, throw something down, and you've got something to work with and make better. Period. That's it. It's that simple. All right, Rico. Let's say goodbye. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, this is supposed to be a live stream, but it's going to need to be a video. Uh, Rico, Rico, hanging out uh, with uh, Mike. Rico, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful, dude. I think that came out great. Cool. All right, you guys. Okay. Wait. Bye. Bye. Adios. Bye. -bye.